Jab 5 was on his way up in the LA rap scene and wanted to leave the street drama behind. But then he allegedly got caught up in a murder case and has been locked up ever since. Today we're breaking down the wild story of how he went from stabbing people with screwdrivers to blowing up as a rapper, then allegedly catching a body and going right back behind bars. Jap 5 came up in South Central Los Angeles, repping the 107 Hoover criminals. LA gang politics are crazy complicated, but we gonna dive into some of the basics. A lot of Hoover and Crip sets in LA are clicked up, but the Hoovers have actually been around before the Crips. Back in the 60s, dudes from Hoover Street formed a crew called the Hoover Groovers. After the Crips were formed in 1969 by Stanley Suki Williams and Raymond Lee Washington, it didn't take long for them to start breaking up and creating new sets. There's all kinds of internal beef between the Crips out in LA, and by 1978, there were at least 45 different Crip gangs in the city. The Hoovers are cool with some Crips, but back in the day, the West Side Crips allegedly murdered the younger brother of an original Hoover. But instead of going to war right away, the Hoovers and West Side had a meeting and talked about the situation. Both sides decided that it was actually a set called the Figueroa Boys who killed the Hoover. So they linked up and caught one of the Figueroa leaders at a nightclub and brutally beat him. In the 70s, the Hoovers and West Side Crips were clicked up heavy. So the Hoover Groovers changed their name to Hoover Crips. Then in 79, the Rolling 60s neighborhood Crips and the a Trey Gangster Crips went to war and made everything more complicated. Sets who were rocking with the Rolling 60s started repping neighborhood Crips, and the crews who were clicked up with the a Trey started repping Gangster Crips. And that's when the Hoovers became Hoover Gangster Crips. That same year, Raymond Washington was shot and killed in a drive-by. All kinds of people caught the blame for his death. But the East Side Crips thought the Hoovers were behind it, and they've been ops ever since. During the 80s, the Hoovers became one of the most feared gangs in LA. They were known for putting crazy pressure on all the ops, and a big part of that was their affiliation with Freeway Ricky Ross. Freeway came up in LA and wanted to become a professional tennis player back in the day, but he couldn't get a scholarship to play at college because he couldn't read or write, and that's when he hopped in the drug game. Freeway was hanging out with an upholstery teacher at a community college who gave him a little bit of cocaine to flip. He took the money he made from selling the coke to buy more, and within a few years, Freeway was one of the biggest drug lords in LA history. Freeway linked up with a bug from Nicaragua and started moving over a thousand pounds of cocaine every week. According to some reports, he was making over three mil a day, and the Hoovers got a lot of clout by being affiliated with him. But at the same time, they were making enemies all over the city. By the 90s, the Hoovers had so much beef with Crip sets in LA that they decided to change their name to the Hoover Criminals and started claiming EBK or Everybody Killer. Jap 5 reps the 107 Hoovers, and he's been around the gang his whole life. A lot of street dudes get active at a young age, but Jap started way earlier than most. His dad reps Hoover too, and he's the one who taught Jap how to move in the streets. Most parents try to keep their kids out of the trenches, but Jap's dad would take him out on the block when he was a little kid so he could really understand the environment they were in. Jap's dad was going in and out of prison his whole life, so he bounced around the city a lot and started getting into trouble. Jap saw how much respect his dad got from people around him and how all of it came from gangbanging. Being taught how to move in the streets might have helped him survive, but Jap told No Jumper that growing up like that is a curse. He was always starting trouble, but the first time Jap got locked up was for stabbing another kid at school with a screwdriver. According to him, the kids at school were always slap boxing, and one day Jap beat a dude up pretty bad, so the classmate came back with his homies and jumped him. Jap wasn't gonna let it slide like that, so the next day he took a screwdriver out of his bag and started stabbing the dude who jumped him. Luckily, the kid wasn't too hurt and just got marked up a little, but Jap still got arrested over the situation and ended up in Juvie. He was already fighting a lot in the streets, but Juvie was even crazier. Jap started running into ops from sets he never even heard of before, and basically every day he was throwing hands with someone. Jap said going to Juvie made him a lot more aggressive, and when he came home, he was getting deeper into the trenches. After spending nine months locked up, he was back out for half a year, and that's when Jap caught his first real charge and got sent to county jail for robbery and gun possession. Going to county didn't slow Jap down though. When he came home, he got right back to the streets. And not before long, the cops had all kinds of cases against him. Jap never said exactly what they had on him, but everything got rolled up together and Jap got hit with a four year prison sentence when he was 18. Juvie and county just pushed Jap deeper into gangbanging, but he told No Jumper that prison actually rehabilitated him. When Jap went inside, one of his cellmates was a dude in the 70s who had already spent 50 years behind bars. The OG told Jap he needed to switch up how he was moving and not throw his life away, and that's when Jap's mindset started to change. He used his time on the inside to learn how to rap and write songs. Jap was never thinking about becoming a rapper, but one of his next cellmates wanted to make it in the industry and inspired Jap to try it out. Going to prison also made him realize how pointless all the violence in the streets is. 
While he was locked up, Jap became a boxing trainer and even trained dudes who rep enemy sets. They would all play basketball games together too. And Jap said it didn't make any sense because if they were in the streets, they'd be shooting at each other, not playing basketball. When Jap came home, he knew he didn't want to go back to gangbanging and end up right back in prison. So he got a legit job as a barber and started dropping music. But even though Jap was trying to change his life for the better, he still ended up going viral for all the wrong reasons. One day, he fought two dudes back to back who were robbing innocent street vendors. And the video blew up all over social media. Jap said after situations like that, people wanted him to crash out and put hands on more people. But after his music started popping off, he got better supporters online who actually wanted to see him win. Jap was getting some buzz on his name in the industry, and it looked like he might be the next street rapper from South Central to make it out. Then people started paying even more attention to Jap 5 after a dude named Prip Mac started beefing with him. Crip Mac reps the 5 5 neighborhood Crips and started going viral for his wild personality. He was in and out of jail a lot, but in 2017, he caught a more serious case and decided to hop in the booth when he came out, just like Jap 5 did. The first time Crip Mac went viral, he was still locked up. Crip Mac recorded a diss track aimed at Cardi B that blew up. He didn't have any real reason to take shots at her, but the track popped off and had a lot of people paying attention to him. Crip Mac kept going viral for taking videos with his cat and acting crazy. But behind all that, he has real life issues with the Hoovers. In 2018, one of his best friends was allegedly murdered by a Hoover affiliate. So Crip Mac got the words Hoover Killer tatted on his forehead. After Jap 5 started blowing up, Crip Mac started taking shots at him and they went back and forth on social media a lot. Fuck Jack, gone hood. You're another snoover sexual boy. Oh, hell, what can I say? See, Mac got a mental problem. <laughs> on Fight Fight Crip, I do. And I really does destruction on neighborhood Crip. What else you gotta say, fool? Oh, hood. Crip Mac wanted to set up a boxing match, but Jaff said there wasn't any real beef and that he wasn't gonna box unless he was getting paid for it. I'm like, man, who is this weird nigga? And I seen he had this shit on his head. I'm like, this nigga a weirdo. Mm. So I posted him on my story and all my homies like, what the fuck? They all start commenting like, who the fuck is that? Like, this nigga weird. Like, look what, he, look what he's saying. He's saying, fuck Jab. Like, I don't even know this nigga. One of Jab's old barbers was actually an OG from the 5-5 five five Crips, but Jab had never heard of Crip Mac. Jab was just laughing the situation off at first, but things were different when he ran into Crip Mac behind bars. Jab 5 was getting his music career going and trying to stay out of the streets, but then out of nowhere, news broke that he had been booked for a murder. According to rumors online, he had killed a rolling 60s crib named Shady Blue and went down for the body. Everyone thought the story was true and that Jap 5 was facing life in prison over the situation, but it turns out that's not true. According to Street TV, Jap never got booked for a murder. It's not clear what charges he actually got hit with, but Jap pleaded guilty and will be up for parole in 2026. Jap 5 hasn't been in touch with fans much since he got locked up, but Crip Mac gave everyone an update in 2023 after he got booked in the same place as Jap. According to Crip Mac, he wanted to throw hands with Jap on sight, but had no idea how good Jap was with his hand. So when I'm out there, kid, don't hush this. I come out my shirt, I'm waiting for I cut, 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 and I realized that cut had proper training. I go in, I'm swinging, I'm swinging on hustlers. I hit cut with two on hustlers, but at five, like it didn't fade cut on hood. And then that's when cut came with just a couple vicious punches. The, the chin called neighborhood crypt the temple and then cut hit me somewhere right here cut i couldn't breathe i failed someone told jap it was enough so he stopped and told crip mac you ain't no hoover killer so crip mac hopped back up and started throwing hands again he admitted that jap definitely won though and after they fought jap showed him his tattoos from when he was a golden glove boxer they had a lot of beef while they were on the outside but you can tell that crip mac has a lot more respect for jap 5 now after they threw down there's not a lot of info about Jap's case available right now, but hopefully he gets his parole granted in 2026 and can finally leave all the street drama behind for good.